With financial fair play being a hot topic at the moment, it's a great thing to be able to analyse how much spend and net spend on transfers teams are doing in each season, especially the current season and previous seasons. And to be able to get that data is really easy with World Football R in R. So I'm going to show you how you can pull that data and create graphs like this. So let's jump over to my R Studio. All the links to all the different codes for World Football R are in the description below, along with the R script and also a video to how to install R if you haven't done that before. So once you've got R Studio loaded up, all you need to be able to do is get the latest version of World Football R. There is a set package already within the R packages, but it's not the most up to date. So the easiest way and the quickest way to be able to get the most up to date version is to pull the one held on GitHub. And that's where all the documentation is held as well. So the first thing you want to be able to do is install DevTools, which lets you be able to install and grab packages that sit in GitHub. Once DevTools is installed, you can then point DevTools to install underscore GitHub. And then you just need to just put in this name here to be able to point to the actual package for World Football R. And then once that's run, I've already installed it, it will install the whole package. And then all you need to do to actually load in the package is to do library and then in quotation mark World Football R or whatever packages that you're going to be using. So if I just run that now, we have now got that installed. First thing I'm going to show you how easy it is just to get this season's transfer spend and income income for each team in the English Premier League. And all you do to do that is you point to TM, which stands for Transfer Market, because that's the website World Football R is scraping the data from, and then underscore team underscore transfer underscore balance. Now, if you wanted to do a different league, you can do one where you put country underscore name. And then if you wanted to do, say, a Spanish league, then all you do is just put in Spain instead of England here. And then it's always the start year for the season. So you're not putting in both years or start and end year. You just always put whatever the start of that season is. And that's the year you put in. So this result here will give you all English Premier League teams transfers spend and income for this season, both the summer and the winter. And then all I'm doing is just saving this into a table so we can just view it, which is what I've got down here. And all I've done is called that ELP underscore team underscore balances underscore 2023. So if I just run this, you'll see what I mean. And now that's loaded up. You can see we've got here the country, the league, the season, which at the moment is incorrect because technically that should be saying 2023 or 2023 stroke 24. We have to give you the proper season, but that's actually incorrect correct. I will be doing a bit of code later on that corrects that. So when you are looking at more than one season, you actually get it and you don't just get the top team because that's what it's doing at the moment. There must be some issue with the code which they need to fix, but there's always updates and that's why it's always good to install the latest version from GitHub because then you always get the updates when they're fixing stuff. And then you've got the actual squad name and then you've got the expenditure, which is the spend that the team has made. And then the income is how much they're made in. So according to this, Crystal Palace and Luton didn't actually sell any of their own players. They might have loaned some out or got them all released, but that was the case. And they must have done something because they do actually have out and in so they probably did release some players or possible could be loans and therefore you've got an age difference here unless it's picking up the age because nothing happened and it just happens to be exactly the same but then it's not the same here which makes me think that's not the case it's just pure luck that the one the amount of ones they've got in has replaced whatever they've released on loan or just released and it's the same age difference so you actually have that bit of information there but we don't need to worry about that for now this is the main thing here and the good thing is because we have the expenditure and the income then we can actually get the net spend because what we can do is just take the income and then take away the actual spend so then that would show you if a team actually made profit from sales or they ended up spending more than they made in selling players. But for now, what we can do is look at a chart to be able to see which teams spent the most. So we're only looking at spend. We're not worrying about net spend or anything like this. And the best way to actually plot is you want to be able to load in what is ggplot2, which is going to be the package that will allow you to create the actual chart. And then you've got dplyr, which lets you just do some additional add-ons within the graph to be able to then just bolt on certain extra parts, especially if you're going to be doing some filtering or anything like that. And then and scales which will just sort out any sort of formatting and in this case I want to be able to then format as millions instead of showing it as the whole number of millions it's hard to read it because there's so many zeros so this way you can break it down into how many millions have actually been spent but that's where scales comes in 
So you just need to install those packages with install.packages and then in brackets and quotation marks, you just put the packages names and then you just need to load them in. I've already installed them, so I'm just gonna run that. And then what I'll do, I'll just run this one and then I can explain everything that's been done. What this whole chart has pulled is showing you from the team that spent the most to the team that spent the least in the current season in the Premier League. They included a table, included labels in there that tell you how much. And then down at the bottom, we've changed what the x-axis title is. We see here now we've got in millions instead of what whole number would look like and we've just given it a color code of a dark red just because it's spent so if i was to show you what this would look like if we just did a very simple bit of the chart so if we run this you can then see what the chart would look like in its very simple form and how that works is you go into ggplot and then within there you put in the table that you want the data to be pointed to and then under aes you put a comma afterwards and then under there you put a bracket and then under the x label you want to be able to put what you want to put in here in this case we're doing expenditure because that's the spend and then for the y-axis we wanted to put the teams in now you could just put squad and then it would do it in alphabetical order but because you don't want to see it in alphabetical order you want to reorder it by what's the highest you can add in reorder and then in brackets you put in whatever you want your y-axis to be in this case it's the squad team names and then you do a comma and then you put in what you want to reorder it by now it's automatically ordering it in the order that we want but you can change that you can put in ascending or descending in there to be able to change it and then you close that off because at the moment you've got a black bracket here and a bracket here and you've got a bracket there so that's why you need three brackets and then that gives you what is basically your core part of the data that's in there but at the moment you still don't have a chart and so then to actually add the bars in you want to be able to do geom underscore bar and then stat equals identity in quotation mark. And then if I didn't include the fill dark red, it will just give a color scheme of different colors just randomly. But I wanted to do a fill of dark red, which all you need to do is do fill and you can write dark red. You can also do hex codes as well. But a lot of the cases you can just type in whatever the color is, like see down here, light gray, you can type it in and it will give you it. If it doesn't change color, then it probably doesn't exist. So therefore you might want to find a hex code to be able to add in, but it works the same. Now we know how to do a very basic bar chart. What we can do is now fix up the labels down here because you can see these have gone into some weird scientific numbering so what we can do is add this information down here that can fix that and then also we want to add in labels along here so if we highlight this now i can then show you what it does so now you can see down here which is what this bit has done this has created the transfer spend in euros which is what we've written in here because that's the name and then it's made everything into millions and then we just added the m because we're saying the unit m and then the scale this is what works i don't know how it works but it just works but that's how that works so all that's using is scale because remember we got scales here as the library so scale underscore continuous underscore x underscore continuous actually because it's the x axis and then the label which is this information along here that's where you put in the unit format as m with unit equals m for million and then the scale will reduce that million into actually millions and then to change the name at the bottom all you do is do name and then you can just put anything in there and because i didn't want to bother adding in euros at the end of everything i just put it in the title there so you knew that it had euros in it and then for the labels normally what happened is if you use geom underscore label it would automatically put labels at the end but the workaround to get that into place was using the h just to be able to push it all the way to the left and then with a minus one because i just wanted it just to sit slightly off so you can play around with the h just it just that fitted perfectly for what I wanted here and then made the size 2.5 because that was about the right size also the color white because I think it was defaulting to black and then the fill I wanted to remove because it creates a label box and with something like Luton down here that label box overlapped so you could actually see a bit of it so by removing it it worked absolutely fine then I've made it bold and then again like down here I've used the label part to be able to create it so it's looking at it in millions by adding in paste paste allows you to do string combining together so what you're doing is basically going within that paste you're going rounding the expenditure by dividing by the millions so it's dividing the expenditure by euros by a million and then we're rounding it off by zero so we're not getting any decimal places and then we're adding and this is how paste work you do a comma and then you can add in m and you don't need to put a space in it automatically did it and x equals zero is just an extra bit that just helps with the formatting oh and also label dot size also helped with the setting of it i had to play around a little bit to get it sit perfectly and this is this is what works 
So that's how we ended up getting to there. Now, if you wanted to add the title, all you have to do is then add in, you always do a plus after you when you add in an extra bit, then you go GG title. And then all you have to do is just within there, just in quotation marks, type what you want. The one difference is, as you notice here, we have a slash and an N that creates a return. Now, if you do a space after it, it, it would include the space. So this is why I've stuck it in the middle without any spaces, because what I wanted it to do was when it hit the point of Lee, and then wanted it to go into another line and then be able to be spend in 2023, 2024 season. If we run that, we now have our title. Now we still have lots of cleaning up to do because it's you could use it as it is now, but the sizing could be a bit better. The hate the gray at the back, always do with these. We've got this down the side, not telling you exactly what that is, but we know what it is. We don't need, need it. And it would just be nice if just everything was kind of just moved over to here and this was actually closer to there, you know, just making it look nicer. So the best thing to do with these are one, we can remove all this gray. So if you do theme underscore minimal with two bracket open and close, that then sorts out all that gray at the back. So that's all that theme minimal does but the main bit that does the, all the formatting is within theme so just theme on its own in brackets with an open bracket you are now able to basically play around with this as much as you like so that's where theme has its power so if you want to do something that i haven't done here and want to find out a bit more just look up theme for r and then it will just give you all the different elements that you can actually change and the main elements i'm doing here are i'm making the lines here a light gray and making a thickness of two so instead of having it so we've got the panel grid line minor x and y i'm basically removing what we see here as our grid lines and then replacing it with a light gray line that goes vertical and then for the x-axis which is down here we're just changing the size to black or color black and size 11 we're removing the x-axis title so that's when you do element underscore blank because we got that there as well that works the same and all that's going to do is just remove that and then we're going to change the size of these to black and size 11 as well and then for the plot title so this is this information here that is going to be plot dot title equals element on underscore text because it's the text that we want and it's pointing it because it knows it's the title that we then we're going to make size 16 make black still black and we're going to make it bold so that's where you use face face is basically where you can put in like italic and all that kind of stuff so that's where you can get that and then title position plot means that it will make it left just right so that means we'll now have instead of it sitting there it will sit there so if i run it all again we now have our table with all that information then you how many clubs have actually spent money and how much so now we know what clubs have spent we want to know how much of that actually included the income as well so we can get the net spent and how we can do that is by then using dplyr to be able to create additional columns to our table so if we currently look at the table now we want to be able to add on additional information so in this case we want to be able to create a column that's called net underscore transfer underscore income which is going to be the income in euros minus the expenditure in euros like i talked about before then that will tell you if any clubs made a profit or actually how much they spent compared to how much they actually sold and then i want to be able to have a flag that can then tell if an actual club made a profit give it the name of profit then i want the net transfer income which is the new column we created with if it's greater than zero true if not false and that's all you need to do and then you remember when i said about where it's showing arsenal in instead of the actual season you can fix that here just by doing mutate which is what you use with dplyr to create the column and then season equals 2023 so how that works is you take your whole table you then point to it with the arrow and the hyphen and then what that does is because you're pointing to it and it's the same name you're basically overwriting the table so currently it looks like this once i run it it will then have the additional three columns to the same name so if you wanted to have a different table with that information, then just save it. You can call it like maybe extra or something just put on the end, like a, a two or something like that, just so you can then have a different table to look at. But in this case, I want it to go over it because same table, I'm just adding extra columns. And then all you do is then take whatever the table name is, same one it's the same one and then you're using what is called a pipe which is percentage sign and then the arrow and then another percentage sign and all that's doing is saying like point create and that's where mutate is basically add a new column what do you want the new column to be and that's where you put it there and then the equals and then you put in what you want it to be so like i say this is simply just going this minus this and then to create the next one you just do another pipe then you do another mutate and you call it what you want the actual column to be and then do that and then pipe and then if you wanted to change information 
button that's in a column. You don't have to create a new column and then remove the old column. You can just overwrite it. And again, mutate. In this case, we're going to remove the here Arsenal. When I run it, it's going to say 2023. So if we run that now, you can see season 2023. And now we've got these additional columns on the side here where it tells you how much net income was made. Most were a loss, so they spent more than they sold. But there are some teams, Everton's one there, and then down here, West Ham, Wolves, and I believe Brighton as well. Yep, Brighton over here. You've got four teams that did actually sell more than they spent and that's no surprise with West Ham really because they did spend a lot but they made a lot from Bryce so that's what is boosting that up and also like I say it's very interesting to see what the ages are because you can see if teams are actually bringing in younger like Chelsea we know full well that they're going for the youth route and they've got what looks like the youngest even younger than say someone like Brighton yeah even younger than Brighton only just by 0.3 but that shows you what they're doing and then you've got Tottenham who are bringing in younger players but not that young because I think there must have been some extra ones in there that are a bit older so therefore that's boosted that up who's got the oldest i can see 24 7 24 7 so bournemouth and everton brought in the on average older players compared to other teams but then they probably might have got rid of a few more than not but yeah you can play around with that if you wanted to to be able to sort of understand our teams bringing in younger players but that's not what we're doing we are going to be looking at next so this is our new favorite column here and we're going to use that to create a chart and the chart's very similar to what I've already gone through before so I'm not going to go in through it step by step again but I will point out different bits that have changed. The one thing I want to do is yeah we got this title here I want to add a title that calls out by color because what I'm going to do is anything that's minus net that would be red and then anything that is profit so plus net that is going to be dark green and this is where this information is happening and this is how I operate with what is the true and false so that's how it works because here we've got fill equals profit so it knows if true and then false and then that way we can set it so for the colors in the titles you need to add in gg text so you just install that package and then run it with library and then if i just run this whole code and then i can just pop out the bits that are different but the majority of it as you'll notice is not far removed from what we did before the only difference is we've now added in this fill equals profit that then gives you the means to be able to set the colors which we've got here with the red being the minus and the green being the plus with the issue of where setting the actual thing this is still left justified because it's zero so it's still hitting on the point of zero you can move it around if you want it to but one of the issues is because now that's all across that line and all the reds going that way we won't be able to see it because it's white and then that's where i then added in some additional information here where under fill i'm saying if and this is where dplyr comes in again if underscore else and then you put in what is the actual table name and then a dollar sign and then the column name so it's basically table and then column and i'm going if net transfer income is less than zero so basically these ones here make it dark red if not na so that means under here it stays white without this red background but anything below it it does so that's how you get that in to actually show and everything else is the same here the other bit is if you wanted to be able to confirm where your data comes from, you can add labs and then under caption equals, you can then just put in quotation marks where the source of data come from. So I'm saying I got it from transfermarket.com, which is the website that's been scraped by a World Football R. So you know, ah, that's where the data come from. If people wanted to check it or they don't believe what you said, they can go to that site and be able to reference that information so they know it's actually truthful and you're not just giving fake data. And then everything else is pretty much the same. The only difference is this little bit down here so instead of me having the title in here because within labs and this is where the again the gg text comes in and this is where it's really handy this allows you to then start adding in colors and sizing and everything so it's all all this is within the same bit of text just i've then changed this bit is going to be the size of i think it was 16 i think it's already kept to 16 so it keeps its size it's 14 actually I made it 14. I made it slightly smaller than the last one. So then that shows that. And then the problem is I didn't want it to be 14 across here because it's just too much going on. So the idea was I wanted to then return it and then make it smaller. And this is where down here you can see you've got the profit. Now I've got these stars in here because normally what happens is if you put in two stars, 
one star but it's normally two stars it's supposed to go bold but for some reason it's not working at the moment i don't know why it's worked in the past when i've used it on the video around doing dumbbell plots so i don't know if what's happened there if there's something's changed or i think i haven't bothered looking into it but basically just use the same bit might end up working at another point anyway so i'll just leave it as it is but the idea here is i wanted to make it bold and that's why i just got these stars so if it's not working don't worry about stars and then all i've done is just put in what the title is and then i wanted to put a break in so you can see here where we turn but it didn't work so it just run like normal but the way you do it in this particular one is you've got this little break thing down here so you basically got two arrows pointing either way and then you got br which is I think it's back return i can't remember what the actual abbreviation is then that creates a return so if i wanted to or technically i could have put it in there but i thought it looks fine as it is so didn't bother and then within here this is where you can actually set up the styling so font size and if you wanted to the color so it's the same bits of information so you do within there and then we just highlight it all so it makes more sense for that arrow from that arrow you put in span style equals and then that's where you can see down here you can do font size and then you can put how many points 10 pt is going to be the size of 10 and then if you wanted to do a color you could do that as well and you'll just put in whatever you want to do or a hex code in this case because i've got the dark red and the dark green and i know it all works i can just type that in all you do is just put that in that sets your name your font size so now we've made it 10 and then as you can see here i put in i was trying to two and three and it wasn't working i wonder if i do two now but it works or maybe it won't develop and no it still doesn't work anyway so the idea here is like i wanted that to come out so you could basically just point out where bits were working but my main thing here was i wanted to call out ones that were green and ones that were red and then this is where i then did the span style and then the color and then from that point you do how long you want it to last so i've got it going all the way until the end until the full stop so if we keep scrolling you'll see here this is the point so how you end it so you want the color to end so if you only wanted to do profit say you'll just do the span and then the color and then you put this arrows with a slash and then span and then that's an end so then it ends the color so you can barely see it but that full stop is actually black and then i've put another return in and then i've started with chelsea because they were the ones that had the highest net spend and also being the highest spender which you kind of expect and then i've made it dark red so this is a good example of where you put it together in one this is a good example where you put it into one so you've got your span style ends at that point with the dark red so you're setting it going make this dark red what do you want to make dark red is the text in here and then you end it with the arrow slash span arrow you can keep adding ones in so in this case i've done high spender this bit here and then that's ended so you can see high spend there and then you have at the end highest negative spend and again i've put that in there and that's how it's finished and then i've done another break the only reason for the break is is just to give a little bit of space at the top otherwise it looks a bit squished easiest way i found how to actually just give that little bit of space and give something there otherwise it doesn't read it and then i've just ended it with its quotation mark and then you just put the plot title element text box size 50 and then that just does the rest of it and there you go you have this particular chart now and it just reminded me the only difference on the reorder i just realized then because i thought hold up that's not in the same order is instead of using obviously which we used before which was the expenditure we're now using the net transfer income one so that's in the x-axis and also that is in the reorder on the y axis so that one's really cool but you still can't see the total spend so the good thing to do is we can revert back to the original chart we were looking at so if we go back a few it's gonna let me do it there we go this one we want to know how much is spent but then we want to highlight which one's actually made profit so even though they spent that amount he ended up making more in sales than they did actually what they spent and we can do that by highlighting these as green so all we do is just take exactly the same plot data that we got here the only difference is we just use that fill and we're still using expenditure here we do fill equals profit and then we're doing the scale underscore fill manual that's the only difference you do to this particular chart i've added in the source bit at the bottom as well but literally it is all just that so if i run this just with that little bit of extra information we now get the same chart just with this there is one thing actually i almost forgot to say in the beam because we're now using a fill and we got two separate things it creates a legend on the side to remove the legend all you need to do is do legend dot position under theme equals none and it will just remove the legend so that's the difference but so as you can see here the highest spenders which was west ham they made a profit and you can see brighton wolf and then everton down here and everyone else spent more than they made and as you might have noticed when 
when we're looking at this, it's looking at an aggregated level of the actual team. So that's where that one comes in really handy because you can just pull that information without putting loads and loads of lines of actual transfer. If you wanted to actually see all the transfers that happened in a season for a team or all teams, so basically for the what, all the teams in the Premiership for this season, we can just pick one if we wanted to, in this case, Brighton. All you have to do is use TM, which remember it's for transfer market, underscore team, underscore transfer, and then you do team underscore URL equals. And then all you're doing is pointing to the season 2023 for that particular team. So basically what happens is if you go into transfermarket.com, this bit of information, so from this point, you get the whole team data and it would be this current season because that's what it is. So technically you didn't have to add in this if you just wanted the current season, but it's good practice just to add it in just so you know what it relates to. And yeah, you can just go into the website, find another team, pick it out. And if you wanted to look at a different season, all you do is just add this bit at the end here and then just change the start of the season year. And the other thing is you've got transfer underscore window which equals all and what that is is because when you run it you'll see winter and summer you can actually do equals winter or summer if you wanted to you don't have to look at all of them so if i run that now as you can see we now have all of season so this time season actually works and unlike it did with the other table so we actually get the number and it tells you the team it's then got telling you if they're arrival or departure one thing to point out with the arrivals and departures arrivals are technically not players who have been bought but players coming back from a loan but you can see this information along here where it says is a loan true or false so we can see true down here and then it gives you the reason why so it's saying end of loan that's why the person has come back into the team so not an arrival because they've suddenly bought this player it's because they've come back from a loan and as I said down here you got window summer 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 and then you got some winter down here the players from their age their position their name you've got the the league they come from or the league they went to and the team as well and then you've got the information of in the squad appearances i think in the squad means even if they're on the bench and then appearances so it's the same so if it's one to one then that means they appeared in every game they were in and then how many goals they've scored and how many minutes they've played so we can see they've had 17 and they've played that many minutes play 32 and in some a bit less because they've been in squad 24 times appearance is 14 most likely quite sub because that's not a lot of minutes compared to ones we got down here although technically that is 17 so it could have been more but then they could have been subbed off so you got all that information there but if you didn't want to just look at just brighton or just one team and wanted to look at all what we can do we can do a pool of all of the urls so you don't have to finding it on the website and then getting that information each time and then running it separately you can just run the code tm underscore league underscore team underscore url and then you point to the country name in this case we're doing premier leagues so england and then start year 2003 just the same as we did before when we're looking at the balances the total aggregated number of transfers and teams and then all it's doing is getting your urls and then we're just saving it as a table called team underscore urls underscore 2023 just creates a store of a list of all the urls that then you can point to and then all you do is running through this which is like a loop it then goes if you go team underscore team underscore transfers again instead of you using team url as that one url like we did for brighton we just point in that table because all it is is just a list of urls and then it will just go find this one then go to the next find all the ones for that one and that one, that one, that one. it just loops through and does it all it takes a little while so i'm not going to run it here but i've already run it and if we have a look you can see we now have again seasons works but we've got like man city we've got arsenal here we've got chelsea we've got brighton see Still got Brighton, got Aston Villa, Crystal Palace, Nottingham Forest, Everton, Bournemouth. We've got all the teams, all their transfers for this year and ingoings and outgoings and loans and all that information. So that's how you can get all that. And that's what's kind of driving these numbers as well. So if you wanted to do additional analysis on saying like of Chelsea, how many players did they bring in? What was the... Who was the most expensive? How was it broken out? You could have like a thing where you could just look at Chelsea and the players and how it all groups together. That's what you can do with this particular table. But I'm not going to go into that detail at the moment because a lot. But if you want me to end up doing something around that, let me know in the comments below. So now we know how we can pull all the information for this current season, how we can get all the data for all the different teams and also all their ingoings and outgoings, both as an aggregate and also all the players that are involved. If you wanted to be able to look at the whole balance again so the aggregated version but with a different seasons you could just keep going in creating a table that will give you it and just keep doing that doing that doing that but imagine if you want to do that for like 20 seasons that would take a bit of time just copy and paste show the thing like that keep running them and then you can pin them on and all this kind of stuff you can do that in a very efficient way by using 
for loop and how you do that is we can then create what is basically going to be our table so we're just creating this data frame that holds the information and then what that does it allows you to then run through because basically what will happen is it will run the code and then it'll come back to start again and then what we want to do down here is basically go this is the first run through so for say the oldest bit of data which we're going to go for here is like season 2004 to 2005 all the way up to current season and it would start there and then it would store that data and then it would run through again and then it would append it and append it and append it and that's why you want to have a table which is blank first because we're going to be running it so it keeps getting the new information just keep pushing it all the way up to, onto the bottom then we get this whole table instead of separate tables to be able to do this and now we can do that again the only way it knows this is that you need a list of all the numbers that you want to be able to look at because if you remember under the part where we've got the team underscore transfers balance we wanted to be able to do the start year and that's where we put the 2023 but here we got an i that is the variable for the for loop which is what we got set here but what i'm doing I'm running it through a sequence where I'm going start from this, go up by one all the way up until then. And then when that runs, you just get a list of all those years without having to type them out yourself or even creating a table or anything like that. You can see down here, it gives you all the different years. And then all you have to do is then run that sequence there through four, which is your for loop and in brackets. And then you can set whatever you want your variable to call. I seems to be a common thing that I use and other people use, just very simple. And then all you're doing is saying in, and then it's telling you where you want to do it. So if you did have a table and you wanted to push that information through, a bit like when we did all the different transfers or the URLs where it hit the URLs and then it fed that information in, you can add that in instead of doing the sequence. But in this case, we're just going to put what we've done here, that sequence in there. So what is this seek? And then in there you do from, which is the point of where you want this bit to start, and then comma, and then two, where you want it to end, and then how much you want it to go up by. So for previous stuff I've done when you're going through websites if there's a website where you've got information and it updates by 50 or 100 you'll want to do an update from the amount it's taking by 50 or 100 so that would be your buy because that's telling you how many you want to start from and then end and that's where it kind of looks and then picks up the information but in this case we're just using years you only have to go up by one and then within that for loop we then need to do a curly bracket and open one and then all we're doing is basically just using our normal table information we built so you remember we were just pulling in this information and that was 2023 so if we scroll up basically this information here that's just being replicated just with the for loop instead of the 2023 so that's what's happening over here you see with the i all you have to do is whatever you call this is what you put in there and then that pulls that information and the other thing is what you could do is pull all that information and then we could add on those extra columns that we talked about but there was that slight problem of arsenal showed up as the season we want to be able to capture the season that's happened we won't know once we've run it all which what season relates to what we'll be like oh no it just says arsenal everywhere so the best thing to do is to add on your mutates so your extra columns in first so again this information is basically all of this again we're just doing this exact same thing just a copy and paste there's no difference we're just giving it a different name because this time i'm just calling it page data because we're going to have our actual table name is going to be this and then the only difference is instead of putting what the season number was which is what we got here see that one 2023 it's putting in the eye every time it runs through it just adds in that number and replaces arsenal as the name for season with the season number and then as i mentioned what it would do it will then save that information so basically it's going here's the table that it's created so it's just like the normal table that we had that's what's sitting there but we're binding it onto this table which we created up here so you remember the data frame that table name all we need to do is just put that in point to it bind underscore rows and then you do the table name again so all this is doing is going here's your blank table point to it with the latest page data stick it up oh, look at that table again oh we got new page data stick it underneath keep doing that that's how the for loop works and then the last thing you want to do is you just want to do a little pause which is what this sys.sleep is it means that every time it does one because you remember you're scraping a website here it will just pause for a bit and then it will do it again because sometimes a website might block you break the connection because you are scraping so much so it's always remember if you're going to be doing anything where you're going to be using a lot of time this this does take a little while that you need to just ensure that you just put this little pause in and then it works 
and then I've already run it because like I say, it would take a while if I run it now. So I'm just going to just run the table and we can see here we have all the seasons from 2004 all the way down to the current season. And you see here, we actually have the years and not Arsenal showing up as the season name because of that error in the code at the moment. So now we have that. What would be quite cool to look at is of all teams, what is the amount that they've actually spent during those 20 seasons? There are teams in here that haven't been in the Premiership for all 20 seasons, but this is where we can do a count to figure this out. If we tried to run this data for a chart, it would overlap because we've got all the data as multiple different teams, 20 times in cases, teams that have been in the premiership since 2004, all the way up until now. So what you want to be able to do is just create a table that's just grouping it. We still keep our original table because like you remember, like I said here, we just changed the name. So this is the table that we've created with all data we are now just going to add this information to this new table and we're just going to call it group i've reduced the size anyway because it's like it would just get too long so you can see it's cutting off here then again i should have just called it just elp group or something it doesn't didn't need to be as long as i made it but i like to explain what it is so that's why i've set that to that and then as you remember from before with dplyr we can do this piping where we can add things in now this time we can start using the group function which is group underscore by and then we're using what we're grouping by and because we want to keep our y axis it's the same with the teams and you can do this with seasons it doesn't have to be the teams you could actually do it by spend over a season if you want to but we can do teams we can do squad and now we've got that information it's now done that but now we don't have any information here so what we want to be able to do is just use the data we already have and we want to summarize it so under another pipe we do summarize and then we do number of seasons so remember everything before these equal signs are the titles that we're giving it and then all i'm doing is doing n in close and open brackets and what that does i just count the number of rows so if a team's been there for all 20 seasons it will say 20 so that's all that that's doing so that's why it's called number of seasons that's why i call it that the next thing i'm interested in is because of the spend over each season for each team. It'd be quite cool to know what was the average spend? I mean, obviously like 20 years ago, it wouldn't have cost as much to buy players as it does now, but it's still interesting to have a look at the average spend over that particular period of time. And also it'd be the average spend of even if a team has been in there for a couple of seasons, like Nine and Forest, it's only two seasons and they've spent a lot, as you'll see. And that's where you can do the average, which is what they've titled it, and then done mean. So it's not average in R, it's mean. And then you put in what you want to do, which in this case, you want to do the actual spend, which is the expenditure. And then I want the total spend of the players at that time, which is what we want to do here. So that's where you put in sum. Then I've just called it expenditure euros. I kept the same name. And then the same with the net transferring, come and because that already exists we can then sum that because we already added it before and then we just want to then go because now we've got net transfer income as a total we don't want to bring in the true and false because that'd be different for each season so now we're going to create a profit separately so we're doing mutate again then profit and then we're doing the same net underscore transfers underscore income instead of expenditure was it no it was net transfers income before and then the arrow pointing is greater than zero and true and everything else false and then we want to name the have a look at what's the net transfer income average. Now we couldn't do an average before with this because yeah, sometimes when you're working with this particular type of bits of information, it wouldn't let me add it in as a mean and even then I didn't always technically trust it. I mean, it should work because it's just a, it's an average of the total. I just thought best to get it to work. I just added an extra column. And then all I did was just take the sum of the net transfer income because that's what we're calling it now. Because now you've added in a column that already exists. And then I've divided by a number of seasons. Because technically it's total divided by a number of seasons to give you your average per season. So that's why I've added that in there. And then if we run that, you can now see we have all the teams that have been in the premiership in the last 20 years. And altogether there's been 43 and how many have been in all 20 so only seven so arsenal chelsea everton liverpool man city manchester united Tottenham are the only teams in the last 20 years in the premiership who have been in every single season it's crazy to think and then you can see newcastle and west ham at 18 and aston villa at 17 and then down there you've got fulham and then you've got all the teams that have been in a few times and luton are back because luton got relegated just before the premiership kicked in if i remember rightly so that's their first time actually in the premiership and then we can see here we got our average got our profit if they made profit net average net income and expenditure so now we have that information we can then create a chart which is just using the group and it's again it's the same type of chart it's not going to be different in how it looks the only difference is that i'm going to be looking at the top 10 because if you end up looking 
looking at all that's like 47 teams that you've got in a list and it just looks a bit messy and also it's not that realistic because in reality you've got seven teams that have been there longer and three other teams are going to be in it if you do a top 10 but it just looks better if you just do a top 10 but technically you should just probably just do the top seven because those are the teams that have actually been in the premiership all the time so this is what it looks like instead of us just doing the table name which is the new group one we got here and then sticking it within here you can pipe it in and the reason why i've piped it in this time is i wanted to get the top 10 by expenditure which happens to be the top 10 of all the teams that have been in the premiership so you could technically do by top 10 of count of rows so when we're doing number of seasons that would work as well but i just wanted to just do top 10 spent and interestingly in the last 20 seasons even though newcastle and west ham were two seasons less than everton they spent more so everton have actually spent less than those two who have been in the premiership two less seasons arsenal have spent less than spurs liverpool have then spent the second highest than manchester united and man city and chelsea no surprise really because i think man city was 2008 when they were taken over they, they had a crash injection with their previous chairman but they weren't as rich as a current chairman now so the the impact is a lot bigger where chelsea have had influx of money since i think it's actually probably from that season but there was one season as we'll come along in a minute where they didn't spend that much is because they had that transfer ban i completely forgot about that i was chatting to someone yesterday and they reminded me i was like this chelsea fan i was like i saw one where it said like only 33 million it doesn't make sense chelsea spend a lot of money and he goes oh that's when we had transfer ban and go oh, yeah. typical still managed to spend money though didn't you that's where the top end comes in and then you do the number and then what you want to do it by and there you go that then pipes in and then you just basically all the same information all i've done is just added in an extra like return to reduce the amount of space that it's taking up but it's literally all the same information that i've done before no different so now we've got our group with that now we can have a look at that average do you remember when i was saying about like we're looking at the average we want to see which teams are averaging over the 20 years all of them so as you can see it's low we've got lots lots of teams but because it's an average it's a more fairer look because you're looking at the number of seasons the amount spent it's like for like because even though Chelsea have spent this much, which makes them the highest behind Nottingham Forest, Nottingham Forest had two seasons where they spent a lot. So this season and last season, and that's why they got a high average. When in reality, if you were probably went back that amount of time and they were in the premiership before they had more injection of money from their chairman, they wouldn't have been. This gives you a good idea of teams who are lower, but teams who a while ago, they wouldn't have spent as much money. But it's a good idea to understand technically on average, it doesn't matter what season it is, what team's spending. And that's why Nottingham Forest really inflated it's only two seasons when they got into the premiership and they spent so much so that's why they're higher than chelsea you can technically add in the thing to see if they made a profit but there's no point because it's just average i left in that information there from when i copied over the chart but technically you don't need it but like the other charts exactly the same the only thing is i just made this a little bit smaller as you can see size two that's just and then it fitted and that's all it is so now we can see the average let's have a look at the net spent because then we know which team spent the most so if we run that now compared to what they've made we can now see here man city chelsea manchester united insane look at that how far removed that is so you, even though a lot of teams have spent when you saw it they were really on par but it, it's kind of a more closer thing more like maybe like this difference this bit here when you're looking at the spend the reason why these teams along here have been able to spend more including arsenal as well actually is the sole players made profit from it and that meant they were able to spend more but they've still spent over 20 years as much as daniel levy gets it in the neck about being tight and not spending money profit over glory and all that spent 750 million sent more than liverpool in the sense of net spend Liverpool have been lucky with a lot of players they got and then sold for quite a bit but that tells you that that whole narrative nah it's not it's not the case there is a lot of money being spent poorly admittedly but it's being spent and then that's what I can tell you and then actually the only teams that think Portsmouth I think went close to being administration as well end up making money and Blackburn Blackburn was just at the tail end so it's they're probably selling Alan Shearer as probably but to Newcastle is probably what made them that profit so that's where you can see this information now here you, this is pushed over so what I've done in addition to this bit is you remember our if function I've done a fill that just moves the H just for if it's profit or not so basically it's going if the net income is less than zero keep it there which is the minus 02 and I'm 1.02 which is then pushing it over there 
but I'm also instead of doing NA like I did before, I've done dark green. So you've got your label so it doesn't go white to the background and you can't see what it is. So that's all that that's done there. You can, if you wanted to, to be able to line this up better, you can move that over to there if you wanted to. There's lots of different things you can do. Just have a look online to be able to do that. I didn't want to go into that bit of information because it's just, I was happy with how it looked like this. So now we've seen the net spend of the difference. Now let's look at the average. So if we do this one, these in the same group, go run, and then we can see the average net spend. So like I say, this one gives you a better idea of what the average net spend was of teams. And this makes a big difference because now you're looking at in all the seasons, whatever they've been in, like say not in Forest is only two. So therefore you're only getting there to there, which makes them a lot higher than Man City and Chelsea because in Chelsea's case, they've got a season where they didn't actually spend any money they weren't allowed to make any transfers. Man City in the last 20 years weren't spending as much as they were since 2009, I think it is. So 2009 season, taking in 2008, 2009, 2009, 2010 season, when you start getting influx, so you'd have less there. But we can look at all that in a minute. So this gives you a good idea of per season, these teams are in the premiership, just about how many seasons it is on average, what was their net spend? And similar here, just like I say, the outlier here is Nottingham Forest because they spent so much over the last two seasons and it's the only se the only seasons they've been in the Premiership in the last 20 years. And then you got Manchester United and then Leeds and obviously Leeds got relegated. They spent quite a bit more than they brought in. Bournemouth have and Brentford, surprisingly. I always think with Brentford, it feels like they're a team that use sort of data to be able to find like good players and stuff maybe they're just not selling players for much and therefore they are finding good quality players for less money but they're not selling them on when you look at a team like brighton who do that and then <laughs> they managed to make quite a lot of money out of chelsea last season what was it this season i can't remember when they did that transfer it must have been this season because it was under botch no, it was the previous season, wasn't it? But yeah, Brighton made a bit of money. And this is the reason why, if you look at Brighton, they're minus eight mil. So they've spent more, so they, they don't spend, but they're almost leveling out. And if you consider, they've done well. They've managed to find good players who fit a system, whichever manager they've got. They've never been able to sell some of those players for ridiculous amounts of money and then be able to reinvest that and then do it right. It's, it's, it's a good football model because it works for a team that is trying to keep within their means to be able to just build up because that's how you do it you, you you almost have when you're starting off you have to getting players make sure you don't overspend on players who don't actually fit make sure they fit when they do they play well they end up wanting to move on to a bigger club you end up taking that money you reinvest that find some new gems they end up being sold and then your team grows and it's not the greatest way because some you know you're losing the best players in your team but this is showing perfectly how that model works for them considering they've only they've been in the premiership at more expensive end so it's not like some of these teams which were like in it in like the 2000s they've been here for I don't know how many seasons they've been in in there for now. Seven, seven seasons minus 56 mil. Is that working out too? Yeah. So this is the great thing with the data. You find out all this information. I was like, oh, didn't know this, didn't know this. And that's why it's really great to be able to just grab the data and play around with it how you want. And especially when doing this average, because it gives a more fair result kind of of what those look like. But yeah, I didn't realize how much Nottingham Forest had really had spent. You can see how much they spend in the overall for the season, but it's nothing compared to the teams above them. But this kind of highlights how much they've spent over the last two seasons seasons now we've been talking about seasons this is where we can then have a look at one so because we've been talking about nottingham forest let's just type in nottingham oh got ham forest there we go this will now look at nottingham forest as season if i run it you'll see here so we've only got two seasons we got this season and last season so this season they spent less than last season but last season they spent so much i mean they literally bought like three new teams <laughs> the amount of money they spent and as you might notice we don't have the team name here we have it up here it's because i'm looking at seasons now so now we can actually instead of looking at the team let's look at the season but because i don't want it as a group because i want the seasons because you remember when we did the group one that's a squad this is now using the original table we created before we grouped it. And then all I'm doing is filtering by team name. And this is why I've got the name here, because there are parts in this where I want to change the name. Instead of me having to manually go, duh, 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 I've just created a variable that just says Nottingham Forest. So if I just run this, so you see up here, Nottingham Forest, that's all it's doing. It's just giving that name. And then like the for loop, we can just put in whatever we've called it. So in this case, we've just called it team underscore name. So then all I'm doing here is using that table 
table, doing the piping, and then using filter, which is another dply function. And then I've done the squad. So that's the team name, and it equals whatever this is team underscore name and then i'm creating the plot so i'm basically here's your table filtering it by that team and then i'm creating the plot. so you can keep changing this this is why i've got loads of different names along here so i can show you and it will give you new results now the difference here is because of the year being a number for it to work on the y-axis i had to change it to a character so a string so i've put within the y-axis we've got to spend is still expenditure as euros no difference there and then i've done as character dot character season that basically makes it a string so wherever you want to make a string you just put as dot character in the brackets and in this case we're using seasons which is along here and then fill profit so that's why it's all red but with teams that did make a profit in a season that's where you would see green and then we still got our labels i've kept them small because it's 20 seasons with this it's only two so that's why it looks a bit weird but you'll see when i run it with another team and then i've just got the title which is just doing that and that's it and then all i'm doing is removing the legend again it's literally the same plot that i've created before but instead of being squad just changing it to season and then just using a different table to get that information why I went into so much detail in the first part, because that gives you the basis of all the things you can kind of do later on, because you can just keep reusing it and reusing it. So let's take Chelsea as an example. Let's just drop in Chelsea. And then if we run this, we can now see when Chelsea spent. You can see there's some seasons down here where they spent less. Again, I think these, I think it was that season. It was probably these seasons when they had a transfer ban that season i don't know which one it was but the green tells you there are seasons where they actually made more money than they actually spent now last season they spent an obscene amount of money and this season they spent an obscene amount of money the previous season they made money and then other seasons here you can see how much and you know they spent a lot of money at the time but how the football world and how much it cost to buy players compared to how it was 20 years ago or even 10 years ago it's just insane and you can see it here like if anyone remembers when chelsea first started spending like oh my god they're spending so much money and when you look at it here it's like oh yeah team teams like bournemouth or you know middle teams are spending around this amount of money now but that seems low compared to what the teams are spending now just crazy as you can see here this also updates as well because what i've done is you remember that paste we talked about before i've just done paste how much did and then team name and then again it doesn't need to have the space it automatically does it and then spend between so i'm just using that team name again and it just changes the title you don't even have to even bother with that so then let's look at someone like manchester united they spent a lot over on that you can see only one season they made a profit and that was in 2009 but look at that consistently spending quite a lot of money not as much as chelsea there currently or even not in the forest it's still a lot of money but you know it was about the same as not in the forest to be fair for the past two seasons and then let's just put one more in let's put in Tottenham because let's always talk about making profit so let's have a look you can see that's the season when spent no money and then that would be a profit because there'd be players sold during that time and then there's four so four all together four seasons where profit was made everything else was spent more i mean even here you can see these are quite a lot been spent other parts been spent i remember when the bail money come in when would that have been it was like a lifetime ago but still a lot of money spent and only four seasons which actually made a profit so if we like take a team like liverpool let's see if they've made much profit in any seasons with five so in all that time Liverpool have actually had more seasons where they made more profit, profited on a season than Tottenham. Yeah, Tottenham chairman is seen as someone who doesn't spend any money. So take us that as you will. So that's how you can easily just pull up different clubs with that information just by putting that in. You can do the same, you can switch it around, you can look at the teams and then keep looking at filtering by instead of the team name, you can do the actual season. So you can keep looking at different seasons of what's been spent. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give a like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about football analytics, check out these videos over here where I show you how. And as always, until next time.